so this is the actual uh, composition of the state legislative council this is uh, very very important try to remember this aspect <music>
if we take uh, if we quote the exact number six states have the uh, uh, bicameral legislative uh, legislate legislative system bicameral legislative system those states are andhra pradesh bihar madhya Pr uh, sorry maharashtra karnataka telangana and uttar pradesh so before that uh, jammu jammu and kashmir when it was a state it was having uh, two chambers so after the abrogation of uh, Article 370, after all that changes, uh, the system, bicam bicameral system is not there at present in Jammu and Kashmir. So effectively, six states are having the two houses uh, when it comes to legislature in those particular states. All the rest of the states, they have only single house at the uh, in, the, uh, in their respective state legislatures. Right. Now we will try to understand the membership of the legislative assembly right so according to the constitution each state is mandated to have at least one house so this is the this is mandated by the constitution so every state should at least have one house that is state legislative assembly similarly the constitution mandates that uh, the assembly should consist of 60 to 500 members so this number differs uh, for each state based on the population uh, based on the size of the population however uh, there are some ex exceptions for example smaller states states like goa and many northeastern states like nagaland manipur uh, similarly meghalaya so all these are very smaller states uh, I mean, they cannot offer uh, 60, uh, 60 members, minimum 60 number of uh, representatives also. So because of uh, reason, so some states, all these small states having less, less than 60 members also. So basically there are some exceptions for this number. But the general rule is the membership should be between 60 and 500 members, right? So basically how the uh, um, MLAs, members of legislative assembly are elected, they are elected through direct elections. They are elected directly by the people of the state or by the residents of the state through adult fr franchise, adult suffrage. Right. So this is also we have seen in the case of Lok Sabha, for Lok Sabha also the members of parliament, Lok Sabha members are uh, elected from the territorial constituencies through the uh, method of adult suffrage. So basically the voters should be of 18 years of age. So they, they cast their vote and they elect their representative. So the same system is followed for uh, Lok Sabha elections also and that is also followed for state legislative assemblies. Right. Similarly, uh, when it comes to the second chamber, second chamber, now we will understand about the second cha uh, chamber. So the states have the flex flexibility of establishing a second house that uh, that is uh, the state legislative council, right? Through a resolution passed by the assembly with a special majority. So whenever a particular state assembly passes a special majority for having a state legislative council that will be formed so the resol resolution should be passed by not less than two thirds of the major uh, members present and voting and that majority should be a simple majority of the total membership of the house total basically you know the principle of uh, special majority special majority comprises of two things one is two thirds uh, two thirds of the member should be present and voting and uh, that uh, majority should be more than half of the total membership of the house. So basically the special majority principle uh, fulfill these two conditions, right? So whenever that kind of resolution, special uh, resolution with a special majority has been passed by the assembly, the <coughs> parliament, the parliament will create, I mean, through a resolution again pa passed in the parliament, the parliament will create a second chamber. So basically, the procedure in parliament is 
it is required only simple majority simple majority so try to rem remember this difference whenever the state is uh, i mean the state assembly is passing a resolution that resolution should be passed with a special majority for creation of the um, state legislative council right whenever the parliament creates uh, based on the request of that particular state assembly whenever uh, the parliament creates the state legislative council that particular resolution is passed only with the based on the simple majority there is not uh, no need for a special majority so please try to remember these points so whenever the assembly wants to abolish a, abolish an existing state legislative council similar procedure is followed so the state assembly passes a resolution spe with special majority requesting the requesting the parliament to abolish the state uh, legislative council and uh, the parliament passes the particular resolution with a simple majority then the legislative council at the state level ceases to exist so this is the uh, flexibility that is provided when it comes to legislative structure at the state level next is uh, we will try to understand the state legislative uh, state uh, legis legislative council composition so basically this composition is provided in article 171 so please try to remember this aspect also because this is a tricky area the composition of state legislative council is a tricky area and there are many kinds of there is a diverse representation many kinds of representatives will come into the state legislative council so there are questions asked in the past also taking into the consideration of diverse rep representation in the state legislative councils right so first point is the total uh, membership of the state legislative council so it should not exceed uh, one third of the total number of uh, total membership of the that particular state legislative assembly so assembly is there so for example there are 75 members in the state legislative assembly so the membership of the state legislative council should not exceed, exceed one third of this number so basically the membership of the state legislative uh, legislative council of, of that particular state should not exceed 25 members so this is the first principle All right next one is uh, approximately the when we uh, see the membership of the state legislative council so approximately one, th one third of the members shall be elected by electorates comprising members of municipalities district boards and other local authorities in the state as specified by the parliament so basically one third of the representation is coming from local self governments local bodies right so remember one third of the membership of the legislative council is coming from the local bodies right <coughs> similarly let's understand this point uh, the other one third representation so one third of the representation is coming from the state legislative assembly itself so members of the legislative um, uh, assembly mls so they are electing one third representative so basically the state legislative assembly also has the representation in the state legislative council so one third of the members are coming from local bodies and one third of the members are coming from state legislative assembly so how much is remaining another one third is remaining right so in that one third <coughs> one sixth members are nominated by the i mean half of this one third is nominated by the governor right right one third of the members are nominated by the governor how much is uh, no, still remaining still one sixth one sixth of the membership is still remaining so in that one sixth another half that is one twelfth of the total membership of the house these will be elected by the graduates graduates who are graduated in uh, any university in india but residing in that particular state so one twelfth of the total membership of the legislative council those members will be elected elected by the graduates another one twelfth these are elected by the 
teachers right teachers so who are basically uh, teaching in that particular state right so this is the actual uh, composition of the state legislative council this is uh, very very important try to remember this aspect right so one third is elected by local self governments local bodies another one, one third is elected by the state legislative assembly and another one third is comprised of uh, 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 i mean many categories of members uh, nominated by the governor and uh, some members are representing the graduates and uh, some other members are representing the teachers in that particular state right so this is the total composition of membership of the houses so now we will try and understand the grounds for nomination so basically uh, uh, the governor nominates uh, we have seen that one sixth of the members are nominated by the governor so the grounds for no uh, nomination would be uh, the members who have experience or uh, knowledge of literature science art cooperative movement and social service so now we try to compare this aspect with the rajya sabha so when it comes to rajya sabha also the president have the power to nominate 12 members so there are so four grounds have been provided so the same grounds that are provided for state legislative council that is literature science art and social service so when it comes to uh, state legislative councils when additional qualification or ground is provided that is cooperative movement those who are part participated in the cooperative movement so try to remember these type uh, type of aspects these uh, type of things because the question the examiner may focus in these type of areas the uh, these type of small differences right similarly we have understood this type of so for electing the members mentioned in sub class of a b c and even in d so there are there is a system of territorial constituencies right so except the members nominated by the governor all other members till now we have discussed there is a system of territorial constituencies territorial constitu constituencies so basically the members will be representing representing that particular constituency basically we have a teachers constituency we have a graduates constituency etc so basically the elected representatives will be representing that particular territorial constituency right now we will understand the uh, duration of the houses and uh, dissolution uh, dissolution of the houses so basically the state legislative assembly when it comes to state legislative assembly it has a standard term of 5 years so this is also similar to that of lok sabha lok sabha also has the uh, tenure of 5 years generally so sometimes the governor can dissolve the state legislative assembly we have seen this when we were studying the uh, state um, uh, state government uh, chief minister so whenever the chief minister he recommends the dissolution of the lower house the government has to uh, the governor has to dissolve the lower house so except in the in those cases basically the state legislative assembly serves its ter a term of 5 years so when it comes to the state legislative council so basically it is a permanent body uh, similar to uh, similar to rajya sabha however if state legislative assembly decides the house can be dissolved permanently so Uh, except in this case basically the nature of the state legislative council it is a uh, continuous body permanent body however the members have the different tenures so for every second year uh, generally as in the case of um, uh, rajya sabha also one third of the members will be resigning and uh, their position is filled by new members so uh, these are all these conditions are similar to that of rajya sabha and lok sabha right so parliamentary authority when it comes during the emergencies whenever there is an emergency the parliament holds the authority to extend the term of the state legislative assembly uh, the the uh, parliament has the power to extend the uh, the the tenure of the uh, state legislative assembly right however 
once the emergency ceases to exist so the then the tenure cannot be extended by more than 6 months All right so whenever the emergency ceases to exist the state legislature legislature once it completes its term of 5 years it should not exist more than 6 months after the uh, seize of seize of the existence of the emergency so try to remember this condition otherwise uh, during the uh, operation of the emergency the uh, tenure of the state legislature uh, legislative assembly can be extended for more than 5 years so try to remember this point also now we will understand the legislative procedure in a particular state legislature so this is also mostly similar to uh, the uh, legislative process at the central level but when it comes to the uh, money bills this uh, system has a small difference little bit differences try to focus on these differences because these will be the I mean this is the area where the examiner will be focusing right first we will understand the money bills because this is very important and the procedure is this, uh, different when it comes to the money bills so origination and passage so money, the money bill uh, has to be exclusively introduced in the Lok Sabha, uh, sorry, State Legislative Assembly. So it cannot be introduced in the uh, Legislative Council, wherever the, uh, in whichever state the Legislative Council is existing, uh, the money bill has to be introduced in the Legislative Assembly only. So the Council possesses the authority of making recommendations, only it has the authority of recommendations making recommendations it cannot reject or modify the money bill try to remember this point the council do not have the power to reject or amend the modify the money bill it can only give its recommendations however if the council chooses not to respond for 14 days so the uh, the bill will, can be directly presented to presented to the governor governor of the state because when if uh, the legislative council chooses not to respond for 14 days on money bills it is deemed deemed that uh, the money bill is agreed and passed by the council of ministers uh, sorry the council state legislative council it is deemed as passed by the legislative uh, councils without any recommendation and it will be directly presented to the uh, consideration of the governor right now we will understand the so in this way the council's influ influence is confined to potential delays it hardly can delay the money bill for only 14 days so this is uh, this is what a council, i mean legislative council do when it comes to the money bills so basically it cannot obstruct the assembly's decision on money bill so basically it has very limited uh, power it can delay the money bill only for 40 days now we will understand the procedure for uh, bills other than the money bills so bills basically can be originate in either house of the state legislator uh, legislature they can be introduced in either in state legislative assembly or state legislative council so council once a bill is introduced and passed by the legislative assembly the legislative council can reject the bill, can modify the bill or delay the bill passed by the assembly for three uh, within three months. So first, uh, in first inst instance, uh, the legislative council has the time uh, time of three months, right? Uh, within th three months, it can uh, modify the bill, it can reject the bill, or it can suggest recommendations also. If no action is taken by the state legislative council for three months, then it is deemed that the bill has been passed by the state legislative council. Now it can be presented to the governor. So whenever the state legislative council rejects or modifies the bill, again uh, the state legislative uh, assembly again passes the bill accepting or rejecting the recommendations of the state legislative council. So in the second journey, uh, the legislative council can hold uh, can only hold the bill for the duration of one month right right <coughs> so in that period the state legislative council can only delay the bill for one month 
right so after that one month it is deemed that the bill has been passed by the state legislative council and it will it will be presented to the consideration of the uh, uh, governor so here the assembly do not i mean it, it can choose not to consider any modifications or any amendments made to that particular bill in the second instance so in this way if you see overall effectively the state legislative council can hold the bill or delay the bill for four months all right it cannot do more than that so when it comes to uh, bills other than the money bills it can hold or stop the bill for four months effectively right so because of this reason only uh, the purpose of the legislation legislative council is often described as it is the body working working for uh, reminding the legislative assembly of its hasty decisions hasty legislative processes and is it, it is there to present the second opinion it is there to present the second opinion on the legislative initiatives that are initiated by a particular state government so this is only the this is the only significance of the state legislative council so whenever uh, if you see the if you uh, if you see the other case whenever a bill originates in the state legislative council so whenever a bill is originates in the state legislative council uh, if the counts if the state legislative assembly rejects that bill if the state legislative assembly reject uh, rejects that bill so the matter ends there and uh, it rein reinforces the it tells us the importance of the state legislative assembly when it comes to law making at the state level so at the end of the day the state legislative assembly will have its say when it comes to policy matters and legislative matters the second chamber the legislative council only acts as the opinion making body it uh, delays the bill it uh, stops the hastiness in legislative process and it provides the second opinion on the legislative matters right so basically we have studied uh, this under the governor when we were studying the governor also so basically the governor's power are, powers are he can give his assent to the bill or he can withhold his assent so in this case the bill cannot become an act similarly whenever there is some significant issue is uh, include uh, i mean whenever there is a significant issue there in particular bill like federal aspects the issues that are there in the bill may impact the federal aspects right the governor may choose to reserve the reserve the bill for the consideration of the president and uh, the procedure also we have understood when it comes to the uh, state bills the president has full freedom he can reject the bill he can give his assent so etc there are many chances we have studied this under the president when we were when we were studying we have studied this aspect when we were studying the president now we will understand the legislative oversight over the administration how the legislative uh, legislature ex, uh, exercises its control over the state executive right so there are mechanisms of questions so basically the legislate legislature poses questions and interrogates the government on administrative aspects administrative aspects there is a uh, question hour and the members of the legislative assembly pose questions uh, to the ministers and the ministers have to answer the questions so this enables a deeper examination of the government actions similarly there are discussions so members can request discussions on pivotal matters including calling attention motions adjournment motions here the government has to res respond to the issues or questions raised by the uh, members of the uh, legislature so in this way accountability of the government is uh, ensured so here uh, whenever these kind of motions are held the government uh, it has the obligation to supply the information and engage in discussions so in this way the accountability of the government is ensured and enforced right similarly when it comes to matters of finance 
in financial matters also there is a separate and special mechanism through uh, through the discussions on budget discussions on budget so similarly the expenditure and the new taxation cannot be introduced uh, or uh, the expenditure cannot be made uh, without the recommendation or permission of the state legislative assembly so in effect state legislative assembly so when it uh, basically state legislature legislature so without the permission of the state legislature no expenditure uh, can be made from the state consolidated fund and uh, no new taxes can be imposed or taxation cannot be increased without the permission of state legislature so these are some of the financial control similarly the system constitution has provided for post expenditure controls also so basically the cog it examines audits the government accounts and there is public accounts committee at the state level also we have studied at the central level there is a public accounts committee which which examines the reports given by the cag so at the state level also there is a public accounts committee it examines the uh, audit reports of the cag pertaining to the state so the <coughs> all these uh, issues all these scrutiny enforce make the government account accountable for the for the expenditure that has been made by the uh, consolidated fund of the state so this is the Uh, accountability of the government when it comes to the matters of finance similarly there are legislative committees so accountability of uh, the government is also ensured by these committees so basically there are committees like public uh, committee on public under undertakings committee on government assurances and estimates committee is also there so through all these committees the government is made accountable right so basically making the executive accountable this is the essential one of the essential functions of the state legislative assembly so wherever there are two houses it is a essential function of the legislature of the state right so this is the uh, tools or uh, mechanisms available for the legislature to make the executive accountable so try to remember these aspects also right right similarly we have uh, we, we are following a system of ministerial responsibility we have a system of parliamentary democracy parliamentary democracy is there so in which the uh, council of ministers council of ministers they are accountable to state legislative assembly state legislative assembly so this is one of the important important mechanisms uh, to ensure the accountability of the executive to the legislature so all the aspects when we were studying the parliament we have understood the principle the system of parliamentary uh, democracy in which the executive is accountable to the uh, govern uh, accountable to the lower house of the parliament that is lok sabha so as long as the council of ministers have the support of the lok sabha they stay in the government so similar principle applies to the uh, state government also the state legislative uh, the sorry the state government that is council of ministers headed by the chief minister they hold the office during the uh, as long as they have the confidence confidence of the state legislative assembly so once they lose the confidence of the state legislative assembly they have to resign from their position so whenever a no confidence uh, motion is passed saying that they no they no longer have the uh, uh, support of the lower house that is state legislative assembly they have to resign from their positions so this is one of the important tools that is uh, there in the hands of the state legislature to make the executive that is state government accountable to the legislature so these are some of the aspects about the accountability of the executive to the legislature now <coughs> let's try and compare the position of the state legislative council with the state legislative assembly so because um, a many number of questions are being asked from this area the comparative analysis of the both houses right when it comes to origin of the bills money bills can only origin in the state legislative assembly they cannot be introduced in the council 
other bills can be introduced either in uh, legislative assembly or in legislative council so except money bills other bills can also be introduced or initiated in the state legislative council next it comes to approval or rejection of the bills it holds the ultimate supremacy in decision making the council's uh, council's recommendations are not binding on the assembly right can only make the legislative council can only make re recommendations whenever uh, when it comes to money bills on other bills on other bills except uh, the money bills it can modify or reject the bills but it is only when it comes to final i mean at, at the end it can only hold or stop a bill for only 4 months in effect 3 months at the first instance and one more month at the second instance so effectively it can stop a bill for 4 months next composition and elections so the lower uh, the state legislative assembly it is elected directly by the people uh, through the principle of adult franchise right here members are elected some members are elected by the uh, mls itself members of uh, state legislative assembly some members are nominated by the governor some members are indirectly elected by the graduates and the teachers so and uh, some other members are indirectly elected by the local bodies so composition varies a lot right there is a lot of diversity in the state legislative council next representation and expertise also we have understood so, <coughs> so basically the members of the state legislative council they come from diverse fields diverse fields so try to remember this difference so here the members of the state legislative um, uh, assembly are they are directly elected by the people and they are the direct representatives of the people of the state right Next is tenure and stability. So basically their te uh, tenure is 5 years unless the, uh, that is dissolved by the governor before the completion of the tenure. So here the uh, members have the different terms, staggered terms. So membership is different here. So however, the state legislative council is uh, continu a continuous body. It, conti it provides a continuity to the administration whenever uh, the state legislative assembly is dissolved right next is role in governance so it, this assembly state legislative assembly has the predominant role when it comes to the administration the council acts as a revising chamber so we have understood its role clearly it acts as a revising chamber it provides a second opinion it stops the hastiness in uh, law making or uh, whatever the decisions are, are taken by the state uh, assembly, state legislative assembly, so it provides some breaks to the hastiness in uh, legislature uh, acts making or uh, actions of the legislative assembly. Next, when it comes to financial co control, it holds the primary control over the finances. Assembly holds the primary control over the finances, including the approval of the budget so here the council can review and suggest mod modifications it cannot reject the money bills or even the budget right so here it has a limited powers when it comes to money bills including the budget next is decision on dissolution so it can uh, the legis the house uh, the legislative assembly can be dissolved by the governor so whenever the assembly is dissolved, it leads to fresh elections. So here the council cannot be dissolved by the governor. It can <coughs> only dissolve on the recommendation of the state legislative assembly that is passed by a special majority. Then parliament can pass a law to uh, dissolve the council. So whenever the state assembly is not there, it provides continuity to the administration. Council provides continuity to the administration. This is its uh, role. Next is, uh, when it comes to contribution to the legislative process, assembly is central to the legislative process and uh, which, is the, which, has the power, which has the power to make, amend and uh, repeal laws. So here, 
the council only offers a revising role it provides a second opinion so criti it critically examines the legislation but with only limited powers to obstruct so we have understood it has it can effectively hold a bill for the period of 4 months so this is these are some of the basic differences between the legislative assembly and the legislative council right we also have to compare the position of the legislative council with the that, that of the rajya sabha because they are the second chambers uh, rajya sabha is at the central level and the legislative council at the state level so we have to uh, do a comparative analysis of both these houses also so right first we will see the similarities between rajya sabha and state legislative council so bicameral structure they both are part of the bicameral system bicameral system right <coughs> they coexist they exist along with the lower houses lower houses so lower houses are basically lok sabha lok sabha and uh, at the state level it is legislative assembly so these houses the council at the state level and the rajya sabha at the central level they have to coexist with the lower houses so basically they both have representative function both serve as a revising and uh, representative function so basically the lok sabha sorry the rajya sabha represents the states at the local uh, at their central level similarly uh, legislative council represents diverse people it represents the local bodies so it uh, represents the state itself because uh, some members uh, members of the legislative assembly also sending their representatives to the legislative council similarly it represents the graduates and teachers right so basically uh, they represent a diverse uh, diverse people or diverse bodies at the uh, respective level indirect elections both bodies are elected members are elected indirectly indirectly so here the method involved is proportional representation proportional representation right uh, proportional representation system is uh, used for election of election to these bodies both Rajya Sabha and Legislative Council. Similarly, we have also a system of nomination. Nomination by President and Governor. So, these are some of the uh, similarities when it comes to Rajya Sabha and Legislative Council. Now, we will see the differences. So, basically, uh, the point is Rajya, Rajya Sabha has Rajya Sabha has lot of importance when it comes to federal issues federal issues because uh, for practical purposes we are following a system of federation so in that federation state uh, states interest have to be represented at the central level so that is basically that duty has been done by the Rajya Sabha however when it comes to state level state level so that kind of uh, federal system federal uh, proper federal arrangement is not there uh, when it comes to state and the local bodies so there uh, it is not a perfect federation the state government has the uh, i mean absolute powers when it comes to relations between the state and the local bodies so uh, because of that reason the legislative council in fact, which has to effectively act as the representative of local bodies at the state level. So, that kind of powers, strong powers are not given to legislative council. So, this is the major difference. Uh, the major difference is Rajya Sabha is representing, representing the federal units at the central level. However, the state uh, legislative council, it is not exact representative of the local bodies at the state level. So, because of this reason, the powers of the Legislative Council have been diluted a lot. So, basically, it, 
it basically acts as an advisory body right so now we will see the differences composition and the constituency so basically legislative council represents the states and the local bodies within the state at the state government level uh, similarly the rajya sabha when it comes to rajya sabha it represents the states and the union territories at the central level so basically rajya sabha is critical to the federal structure federal structure right next when it comes to powers and functions so it has lesser powers when compared to state legislative assembly a lot of lesser powers when when it comes to uh, uh, state legislative uh, uh, assembly so when it comes to even uh, it has very less powers when it comes to the money bills effectively it can hold the money bill money bill for only 14 days however when it comes to uh, the powers of the uh, rajya sabha it has equal powers with the lok sabha except in the money bills so except in the money bills the uh, rajya sabha has equal powers with the lok sabha when it comes to ordinary bills ordinary bills and also the constitutional amendment bills amendment bills so the lok sabha uh, sorry the rajya sabha has special uh, equal powers similarly furthermore it has certain special powers also the rajya sabha has special powers also whenever uh, there is a proposal for creating uh, all india services and also whenever it uh, when it comes to uh, the parliament uh, enacting a law on the items mentioned in the state list so these kind of in these kind of situations the rajya sabha even has special powers so that kind of powers are basically lacked by the Uh, legislative council <coughs> similarly when when we see the creation and the abolition so the states have the flex, flexibility of create and abolishing the legislative council so they have to just pass a resolution requesting the parliament to create or abolish the legislative council however the rajya sabha is a permanent body it cannot be abolished right so it is integral part of the federal structure so rajya sabha is the integral part of the federal structure next is election and membership term so members have basically in council legislative council they have varied terms elections conducted periodically based on the state specific rules similarly here when it comes to rajya sabha members are elected for a 6 year term this is a permanent body one one third of the members retire every 2 years and uh, providing continuity so whenever the members resign for every second year new members will be elected new members will be elected so these are the basic uh, differences between rajya sabha and the state legislative uh, council so as uh, we can and uh, we can see rajya sabha is a very powerful body when it comes to federal system right however the same substance same importance is not given to legislative council legislative council is not given uh, proper importance because uh, various reasons uh, one particular reason is the federal system is not that particular uh, when it comes to state level i mean the state and the local level bodies the i mean here when it comes to uh, this uh, this stage state and the local bodies the state government is all powerful so though we have the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendments that uh, substantial powers have to be passed to the uh, local bodies that has not taken place and the state is all powerful state holds all the powers here so because of the same reason also the council has not made as powerful as powerful as it should be so this is the major difference between rajya sabha and state legislative council right we will now see the why the legislative council has given a diluted powers uh, it should it uh, it has not created on the lines of the rajya sabha we will try and understand the reason behind this diluted powers for the state legislative councils right uh, there are some historical reasons 
basically the legislative councils this kind of body has been introduced during the british period itself basically the members were nominated here they were representing certain interests in that particular body so basically the origin itself started as a, a council the origin of the council it started as a nominated body and the different members were represent, uh, representing different interests so over the time the elected representatives have been introduced but its basic nature remained as a nominated body nominated body and its nature remained as uh, a body representing diverse interests diverse diverse interests all right so basically the body was representing the specific uh, local interest so it was representing the spe specific local uh, local interest including graduates and the teachers and uh, some local authorities we have seen uh, some of the local interests and some of the local bodies have been represented through the state legislative council similarly bicameral uh, system so we have at the central level we have a strong federal system strong federal system so we could not achieve that kind of strong federal type of arrangement when it comes to state and the local bodies local bodies right so so because of that reason the state legislative body has stronger financial powers uh, when it comes to money bills it has all the say when it comes to the money bills so the council has been provided a diluted powers so this is to enable faster legislation faster legislature legislation when it comes to financial matters matters all right <coughs> so we see uh, so basically the i mean the the i mean the expert opinion also is that the council the council should not act as a unnecessary break unnecessary burden so it should not act as a unnecessary break break when it comes to legislation so because of this reason also there are limitations on the powers of the state legislative council because they thought that already we have a system federal system at the central level at the rajya sabha is there to oversee the interest of the uh, federal issues there so at the state level there is no need of creating a uh, special body to oversee the interest uh, oversee the federal aspects here at the state level so because of that reason also a diluted version of uh, rajya sabha is created at the state level so that that is also one of the reasons for uh, creating a weak body at the state level as the second chamber right so they have also considered some practical aspects because the councils are some sometimes uh, seen as redundant redundant or not useful so basically it happened that the people who are unable to contest and win the direct elections as mlas members of uh, legislative assembly they have been those, uh, those uh, members who are unable to contest and win elections so those members are indirectly sent to the legislative councils so to fulfill their political demands or uh, political aspirations so this is uh, seen as a body which is uh, hosting the people Mem or members who are unable to elect unable to be uh, unable to unable to be elected as the uh, members through the direct elections so this bo body is uh, this body is hosting those people right so this body legislative council is basically holding or hosting those people who are unable to contest and win the direct elections so this kind of criticism is also there so because of all these reasons a diluted version of the legislative um, council has been created at the state level so try to remember this uh, these points uh, the uh, these points can become one option in the question uh, whenever a question is being asked from the state legislature 
uh, topic right now we will see some questions which are asked from this uh, area the first question uh, it is asked in 2019 the question is with the re reference to the legislative assembly of a state in india consider the following statements uh, first statement is the governor makes a customary address to the members of the house of the uh, house at the commencement of the first session of the year so the second uh, uh, option is second statement is when a state legislature does not have a rule on a particular matter it follows the uh, lok sabha rule on that matter so when we were studying the governor <coughs> we have studied that the governor addresses the every uh, first session of every year that is budget session so this statement becomes correct similarly the second statement is also con uh, correct whenever uh, there is no uh, there is no rule uh, accord i mean for a particular aspect so basically the legislature state legislature follows the practice that is there in the lok sabha so this is coming as a convention so this statement is also correct so both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct so option is correct option is option c the next question is it is asked in 2015 so this is the area where i was saying the, uh, it is about the <coughs> composition of the houses that's why i was uh, repeatedly saying the composition of the assembly and moreover the composition of the council is important because this is a tricky area right the question is uh, the first statement is the legislative council of a state in india can be larger in size than half of the legislative assembly of that particular state second statement is the governor of a state nominates the chairman of the legislative council of that particular state so here we can see the first statement is wrong basically the he is saying that the size is half it can be larger than half but the fact is it should not be more than one third of the size of the state legislative assembly the size of the council cannot be more than half of the size of the state legislative assembly so this is a uh, first statement is a wrong statement similarly the governor for a, governor of a state nominates the chairman of the legislative council of that particular state basically this is also wrong statement actually the chairman is elected by the elected by the members of the legislative council so this statement is also incorrect so the option is option d neither one nor two right so these are some of the questions asked previously from this topic i hope you have gained some important information through this lecture and this is all for today Uh, see you next time see you bye